Howdy folks and welcome back to World of Warships with Rear Admiral Jingles and we have a rare treat for you today. A carry of epic proportions. I realise that's something of a spoiler. <laughs> but I hope you'll forgive me. Uh, featuring Swanky Manatee. Great name by the way. In Canada's fightingest ship, HMCS Hyder. This is a fantastic little tier 7 Commonwealth destroyer. Although the skill floor on this thing is a little high, it's definitely not for the newbies. You really do have to play the ship aggressively and take advantage of its consumables in order to get the most out of it. And that's a dangerous way of playing a destroyer, particularly when there are aircraft carriers around. And in this battle, there is an aircraft carrier around. Uh, both teams have HMS Furious, the tier 6 British aircraft carrier. Now the Hyder is tier 7, but... Well, that's the thing about aircraft carriers, particularly at this level. It's not really so much the direct damage that they do, although they can be fairly nasty. It's the fact that they spot you for all the cruisers, battleships and other destroyers on their teams, and they're the ones that do all of the damage to you. And in the Hyder, if you're playing it right, that can be particularly dangerous, because you have to get close. And the reason you have to get close is because while the guns can fire out to a range in excess of 12 kilometers, it takes forever for the shells to get there. So if you want to actually kill something in the Hyder, typically you need to be within at least 7 kilometers in order to be able to score effective hits with this ship's very potent high explosive shells. And if you get spotted within 7 kilometers of a bunch of enemy ships, that does not leave a huge window of opportunity for you to evade incoming fire. Yeah, you can do what other destroyers do in aircraft carrier games. Keep your distance, stay back, fire at targets from around 10 kilometers away, but you won't hit much, you won't damage much. And you certainly won't be challenging other destroyers, like the Mars over there, for possession of any of the capture points. So if you do choose to live a life of danger on the high seas and play the Hyder in the way that it deserves to be played, you're going to find that the Hyder does have a couple of tools that make life a little bit easier for you. Number one, the creeping smokescreen. Now, we all know, or hopefully we all know, that smokescreens are torpedo magnets. Manatee's just fired his torpedoes into the master's smokescreen, and he's caught him with one of them. But the Hyder doesn't have to stop inside its smokescreen, providing it's going no faster than one quarter throttle, it can take the smokescreen with it and stay undetected. It also has an extremely long duration, but short ranged hydroacoustic search. And he's quite handily spotted the Mars's return torpedo salvo, even though there was no way they were ever going to hit him because he wasn't sitting in the same spot inside the smokescreen. Unlike the Mars over there. Ooh, is this going to be first? No, it's not going to be first blood. The enemy team have just sunk a Koningsberg, but Manatee did get the Mars. So there's his first kill. And in the process, of course, even though he was temporarily forced out of capture point Delta by the presence of the enemy destroyer, he's delayed the enemy team capturing it. Although it does look as if this enemy Konigsberg is going to have a try. I'm not entirely sure why. He appears to be determined to not hide inside the smoke screen uh, left there by the Mars, but is instead advancing in open water while getting shot at by Agonizer now. So, <laughs> well, I'm sure it seemed like a good idea at the time to him. And here comes contestant number three, the Koenig. German Tier 5 battleship. Hmm. Remind me what caliber guns the Gneiser now has. They're 15 inch, aren't they? Same guns as on the Bismarck, except it has six rather than the Bismarck's eight. They can completely overmatch the bow and stern armor of a Tier 5 battleship, can't they? Yes, yes, they can. <laughs> oh dear. <laughs> oh well. It's not just the Gneis now back there, by the way. There's also an Arizona and the high explosive that you can see pelting the Koenig over there. I think that's coming from the Kirov. You know, I, I do have to confess to feeling a certain amount of sympathy for the Koenig. He's not actually trying to cap. I think he just came down here because he thought, well, you know, I'm in a battleship. I should back up and support my destroyers and cruisers. <laughs> <laughs> you know what they say? No good deed goes unpunished. And you know, actually, since his guns are pointing in clean the other direction, there's, even though this is going to get him spotted, there's no reason 
why Smacky Manatee can't farm an extra bit of damage on the Koenig as well, because, yeah, okay, the Koenig can see him, but his guns aren't pointing in this direction, and there's nothing else that's in a position to take advantage of the fact that Manatee has been spotted. So what the hell, why not? And he farmed an extra kill into the bargain. Now, it looks like the Koenig got an aircraft up. So if you're going to try to sneak a cap, you should probably stay away from it. Although it does look like the Arizona, Gneiser now, and Kirov have the capture of Delta in hand. But Manatee's going to be heading in that direction anyway, since, well, there's nothing behind him but the map border. Note the enemy dive bombers, who appear to be focusing their attacks on the Gneiser now, which is a very brave choice, particularly since it's not just a Gneiser now, he's also blobbed up with an Arizona and a Kirov. And I'm pretty sure that the Gneiser now is the ship on the team with the highest AA rating. I'll just give you all a minute to go and check the stats on the wiki and prepare your actually jingles comments. <laughs> because I know how it works around here by now. But a brave choice from the enemy carrier. You know, rather than going after the lone destroyer who was isolated and out of range of any kind of supporting anti-aircraft fire from this blob of ships over here, no, instead he decided to go for the toughest AA target. So, like I said, brave choice from the enemy Furious. And something that I'm sure Swanky Manatee is very grateful for. And if by chance the enemy carrier should come back, Swanky Manatee is now within the AA bubble defences of the Gneiser now. The Arizona... Well, maybe not the Arizona for much longer. It doesn't look like he's got much time left. He is getting focused. He doesn't have a lot of health. He is on fire. Oh! Smack Humanity actually took a hit, although it was just an over-penetration uh, from, I think, the King George V that was actually aimed at the Arizona. And the Arizona has, no big surprise, been sunk. The carrier is coming back, but he has learnt his lesson, particularly since there's a Helena hanging around here. And instead he's going for the Leon off in the distance over there, which is a far more sensible choice of target. And it looks like he has managed to... yep. Yeah. yeah, he's actually doing a fairly good job against the Leon. Okay, that's not good. Let's just take control of the camera and have a quick look and see what's going on down there with the King George V. The, the Helena's shooting at him. I think the Gneiser now is actually... well, he's heading in that direction, but he's shooting at something else. Meanwhile, to the north, the Leon is in serious trouble. He just took a bunch of torpedoes from the Furious, and judging by the fact that Bravo is flipping. And there are a lot more torpedoes in the water that were not dropped by the Furious, which has sunk the Leon. That must mean that somewhere in Capture Point Bravo, there's an enemy kamikaze. Tier 5 Premium Japanese Destroyer. Very, very dangerous ship. Although, not quite as dangerous as it would be if it hadn't just fired all of its torpedoes. It's very stealthy, and its guns aren't bad by Japanese standards, but they are completely outclassed by the Hyder's guns. And the Hyder is fairly sneaky as well, with a detection range of 5.7 kilometers, and they have both just detected each other. So. In order to survive this, the Kamikaze is going to have to do a couple of smart things. And he's already done the first smart thing, which is smoke up. But the second smart thing that he should have done was to not fire his guns, because by firing his guns, he's just confirmed to Manatee that he is in fact still inside that smoke screen. And as we all know, smoke screens are torpedo magnets, and Manatee's torpedoes are on the way. And now, he's inside sonar range, 3.3 kilometers, so... The third smart thing that he should have done after dropping the smoke and not shooting was to get the hell out of there. But unfortunately for him, and fortunately for Swanky Manatee, he only managed to achieve one out of the three smart things he was going to have to do to stand a chance of surviving that encounter. Why is a Kirov broadsiding a Gneiser now like that? <laughs> well, well, it was so he could get his torpedoes away, of course, but both Swanky Manatee and the Gneiser now are already out of range of the Kirov's 4km torpedoes. Yep, there they are. No threat to anybody. You'll notice that Swanky Manatee is firing armor-piercing at the New York over there. And, well, he was. He's now switched back to high explosive. The reason, of course, is because he had the broadside momentarily of the Kirov to shoot at. But, to be honest, the armor-piercing shells on this ship are so incredibly bad that you're honestly just better off firing high explosive all of the time at everything. I mean, okay, if you're firing high explosive all the time, you'll never score a Citadel at a broadsiding cruiser at point-blank range with your high explosive, but you'll also never shatter on a cruiser broadsiding you at point-blank range 
with your high explosive, and that can and does happen with the armor-piercing shells. So, yeah, sometimes you might get the big numbers with the armor-piercing, but you're always going to get the big numbers with the high explosive. It is just very good ammunition on this ship. Anyway, we did just lose the Gnaiza now, sank by the enemy Leon. The enemy team are ahead on points. Both teams control two caps, but the Cyclone has closed in. Visibility is down to 8 kilometers, and that is not really a problem for this ship, because it, you know, if you're playing it right, really needs to get in close anyway. And there's nothing left that can outspot him. Other than the carrier, of course. Then again, he is bringing his own smokescreen with him. And we're reasonably sure that there's an enemy Exeter around the far side of this island. And, uh, yes, there he is. Now the thing about the Exeter is that while it is technically a heavy cruiser, it basically has destroyer armour. And Swank Humanity is once again going to be tempted to try his luck with the armour-piercing ammunition. Well, just observe the results. That's not quite a flat broadside, but it's as good as. Nothing. Switches to the high explosive. 3,000 damage. Two and a half thousand damage. Yeah? Yeah. Okay, so the Exeter has escaped, at least momentarily, but that's not actually a bad thing, because it means the Exeter can't shoot at him and continue to reset the cap. The team are behind on points, but if they can sneak the capture of Charlie, that situation should change. And it looks like he's about to get some company. And yeah, his engine's knocked out, but he's obviously got the last stand skill because he's able to keep moving, and nobody's shooting at him and inflicting more damage, so there's no reason for him to waste his damage control. In fact, the engine will be fully operational again, right now. And here comes the enemy carrier. But there's a Helena here with him, and the Helena has some fairly meaty anti-aircraft guns. It's a light cruiser, on with 6-inch or 152mm guns. And since he's spotted anyway, there's absolutely no reason for Swanky Manatee to not add his own and the aircraft firepower into the mix, which is going to be really bad news for those dive bombers. So the enemy carrier did what he could to try to reset the cap, but it just wasn't enough. Meanwhile, the Exeter is attempting to flip the cap to the north, Bravo. Unfortunately for him, he's also been spotted by aircraft. Didn't help that he fired his guns at the friendly New York uh, to the south, which gave his position away for the torpedo bombers, but they knew he was inside the cap circle anyway because somebody was flipping it. And once again, Swanky Manatee is desperately trying to get those citadels with the armor piercing ammunition. And once again, the severely lackluster 120mm armor piercing ammunition on the Hyder is just letting him down. He switched back to the high explosive, having learnt his lesson as the friendly Furious. Tries to go for the cross drop on the Exeter. But, oh, no, not quite. Okay. The Exeter's in all kinds of trouble now, of course. He's never going to be allowed to complete this cap. He's got Manatee shooting at him from the rear, and he's given broadside to the uh, Helena, which has rounded the other side of the island, and is now being forced to turn to avoid giving citadels to the Helena. Unfortunately, this tempts Manatee once again into <laughs> going for the armor-piercing shots. He's desperately trying to land those citadels. Unfortunately, it's just never going to happen with this armor-piercing ammunition. It really is that bad. So, hopefully haven't learned his lesson again. He switched back to the high explosive. He's now actually inside the cap circle. Uh, the Exeter is on his way out. It's now a perfectly good opportunity to pop that creeping smoke again particularly since these guys now have nothing else to shoot at. That New Orleans just popped up out of nowhere and sank the Helena. Okay, he's got the Exeter. He's free to switch to the New Orleans now. But the New York has been taken out by the enemy King George V, which means that Swanky Manatee and the Friendly Furious are the only two ships left alive on the team. Unfortunately for the New Orleans over there, he doesn't have any torpedoes that he can fire at the smoke screen. And he's a tier 7 cruiser now, not the tier 8 cruiser that he was originally when the game launched, which means he doesn't have access to radar anymore. You can hear the aircraft overhead. The anti-aircraft guns are blazing away as well, of course. And there are his dive bombers. Enemy carrier desperately trying to spot him, dropping the bombs blind into the smoke screen in an effort to try to give that New Orleans something to shoot at. New Orleans 
getting desperate here, firing blind into the smoke. He may as well, he's got nothing to lose. He's about to die unless he can kill Swanky Manatee. And there's the Kraken Unleashed. Now, credit where credit's due, none of that would have been possible if not for the friendly carrier. The Furious' torpedo bombers were what were keeping the New Orleans spotted. Manatee's Hydro only has a 3.2-3.3 kilometre range. He's blind inside the smoke screen, unless whatever he's shooting at is at very, very close range. Almost close enough that they're going to see him shooting out of the smoke. So, oh hello. Okay, we'll come back to that in a second. Good news, bad news situation. Bad news, friendly torpedo bombers are gone. Which means that even though Manatee's smoke is still running, he cannot stay inside the smoke. He has to go faster than a quarter throttle. Otherwise, he will not be able to see and target the Leon. And yes, he is under air attack at the same time. The good news is that the Leon can only fire his front turret. The further bad news is that the high explosive ammunition starts to give him a damn good trolling. 25 health and... All it did was knock out some anti-aircraft guns. <laughs> but the follow-up salvo did set a fire, which took out the Leon. Further bad news, Swanky Manatee is now out of smokescreen charges, and he is getting hit pretty damn hard by those rocket attack planes launched by that bastard over there. Okay, it's two on two. Carrier and a King George V against Swanky Manatee, and a carrier. But there is no way Swanky Manatee is going to be able to go undetected. Um, he doesn't have any further smoke consumables and he's too close to the Furious. Which means the turnaround on the Furious's aircraft is so incredibly short that as he recycles his squadrons Swanky Manatee doesn't have time to get out of there and get out of visual range. So the only real option that he has is to attempt to do as much damage as he possibly can to that Furious and maybe get close enough to launch torpedoes. But there are dive bombers coming in and he doesn't have a lot of health left and the dive bombers say nope. So it's now one against two. Furious versus Furious and King George V. However, there's three minutes of the game left and the team are 100 points ahead and they hold three of the capture points which means that in the next minute and a half the team are going to win unless the enemy team can find and sink the Furious or flip all three of the caps. And they don't have the time to flip all three of the caps. So realistically speaking, the only way the enemy team can win this is by finding and sinking that aircraft carrier. And the enemy team couldn't ask for better circumstances to snatch the win here, because the cyclone has passed, which means visibility, full visibility, has now been restored. They have an aircraft carrier which can spot a target anywhere on the map, and they have a battleship that can fire shells at a range of 181 kilometers. But instead of going for the Furious, they're trying to flip the caps. But the points difference is too much and there isn't enough time to flip the number of caps that they would need to flip in order to win this game on points. All they're actually going to be able to do, because the Furious is actually concentrating his attacks against the enemy carrier, uh, when he would probably be better off, in fact it's been said there in chat, better off trying to reset Charlie because the King George V has almost certainly lost a lot of its anti-aircraft guns. But really the Furious doesn't have to do anything in order to win this game. He just has to sit there, because the enemy team are making no effort whatsoever to find him and sink him. And thanks to Swanky Manatee's outstanding carry in the hider, and also due to the fact that the enemy team went for the caps instead of the kills, Swanky Manatee's team was able to steal a win on this one by reaching a thousand points while there was still almost a minute left on the clock. Swanky Manatee in HMCS Hider, Canada's fightingest ship. Hope you enjoyed it, and as always, take care, and I'll catch you next time.